We are live, live, and something that rhymes with live. Um, drive. Whoa, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so we missed last week's live. That was, uh, we had a huge rainstorm before that. And the internet was acting all funky. This time, right now, we're doing the live in the middle of a huge windstorm. The winds are just crazy out there. Things are banging around and flying around out there. Things are banging around. Things are flying around. If our trailer tips over, <laughs> someone please call for help. <laughs> Big Dreams Homestead, how's it going? Little White House, what's up? Little Beans Garden, good to see you. Built on the Rock Homestead, how you doing? Oh my goodness, the winds are absolutely crazy. When I checked the weather earlier, I think it was like saying, you know, 26 mile per hour winds. I don't even know how much, how much the gusts are. You know how much the gusts are? I don't. She hasn't been paying attention to the weather. But you... Going outside has been a danger, hasn't it? Yeah, well, you've been shoveling dirt, and you said you're getting, like, sandblasted in the face. I've been shoveling dirt all day. But to anyone watch, that watches our videos, you know that's no surprise. <laughs> that's just kind of what I do. <laughs> shoveling dirt all day. And then the winds, yeah, with the winds, like, every shovel full, shovel it. Blasting my face with sand. It's not, not cool. GG Barnett, how's it going? Geeky Gardens. What's up, Almost Homestead? The Epricate Tiny House. Tech Nerds TV. Raven, how you doing? Prepping a raised garden bed and found worms. I like finding worms. It's really exciting. Find, <laughs> finding worms is always exciting here. It's like a jackpot, like, oh my god! How awesome is that? Uh, Jay says, desert fish, that's about it, right? Yeah. Smooth everything out, drive it out. That's what sanding does, right? It smooths the face out. <laughs> Farming our backyard, how's it going? Tool companies should be sending stuff to review for digging. I agree. Like, send us your digging tools and we'll put them to the test. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> send us your sifters and I'll put that to the test. Any snakes? I haven't seen any snakes yet. Have you? No snakes yet. I think they're coming soon. It's warming up. It's warming up real quick. Yesterday we had temperatures in the mid 80s and it was sunny and hot There's my mom. hi mom <laughs> hi mom hello to you hope you didn't kill yourself out there i saw all the digging and hard work uh we didn't exactly kill ourselves but we're not exactly in the best shape either <laughs> uh how's the cistern coming it's coming along we're making a decent amount of progress, I think, for two people. Video out tomorrow on updates on that. A couple more courses done. Mm -hmm. Looking really nice. But you didn't come out unscathed with all the hard work out there, especially yesterday, did you? Well, I got a sunburn. <laughs> a wicked sunburn, like all across the back and shoulders and everything like that? I've had worse. I mean, I have... <laughs> kind of fair skin so i burn easily mm -hmm. but yeah so i had to i had to smear some stuff on me what'd you smear on you well first because we didn't have sunblock so i found something that had zinc oxide in it and i put that on me for a little protection what were you looking for to put on there what i was looking for like a sunscreen. Yeah, but you didn't find sunscreen. What were you going to use? <laughs> For some reason, we have like a diaper rash cream. So I have to smear. 
And you were also looking for acrylic paint, weren't you? Yeah, I thought that was probably a bad idea, though. Smearing yourself in acrylic paint before going out to work? <laughs> Might be a bad idea. <laughs> but the rash cream works wonderfully. Does it? Yeah. Well, look at that. There you go. Helpful tip on our live. If you don't have any sunscreen, look for some rash cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness who do we got in here we got uh See, brainstorm makers what's southern up southern blast homestead southern blast homestead tarl speakman what's up food foresters in his ass james carrot Emily's Emily, here. hello from the windy white mountains. <laughs> it's pretty windy over here too. Can you can you guys hear that? Can you guys hear the ruckus of the winds? <laughs> A nurse practitioner once told me ranch work is not exercise, so you guys aren't exercising. Wait, what? How do you feel about that? that? I didn't catch any of that. A nurse practitioner once told me. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. All the shoveling, digging, tamping, that's nothing. It's not going to get you anywhere. You should see this guy's building some muscles. What? Get out of here. I told him by the end of this build, we'll both look like bodybuilders. <laughs> we're going to be we're going to be all like built and ripped and <laughs> dark from all the sun and we'll be all oily 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 <laughs> we'll be all oiled up and ripped <laughs> yeah, you could smear mud on you that's what elephants do i should do that that would be easy we're already working in we're already working mud. in all the dirt and just throw some dirt on you you'll sweat and then it'll just turn into mud there easy That's right. Hit that thumbs up. <laughs> we always appreciate the thumbs up around here. I once found a used up tube of dirt. <laughs> what? That's weird. <laughs> aloe vera. You, you're growing aloe vera. In yeah. fact, I was the... Did you mention that? Oh, I didn't. Did you... um, what did you use? So for the burn, I, I mixed some comfrey and aloe. And I put that on the burn. And? And what? Chia seeds. Chia, just for... For the gelatinous effect. To thicken it a little bit. Thicken it. I like the word gelatinous. <laughs> but uh, how did that do for you? you let, uh, I smeared it on her back. This uh, aloe... Uh, comfrey yeah it was thing. nice i mean it's, How'd it do for you? it's soothing um i think we need to figure out a better way of applying it because maybe i'll try what i did with the bruise that i have on my leg kind of sandwich it between two pieces of fabric or something because mm. then you had to kind of like scrape it off when it was done it wasn't too pleasant Brainstorm maker said this saw the lizard the other day. That means this, the the danger noodles are right behind it. Yeah. James Carrot asks how the back feeling go. Has the back feeling went? That that's tough. It's tough and it takes a while. It takes a while because like all the the dirt I have been using. Well, some of it, some of it's around there. Some of the rocky, unsifted stuff I just toss back in. Some you gotta move. Some I gotta over. move over a quite a distance. Um, so it takes a while. It takes a while to to backfill it and tamp it down. But I've been doing it every couple courses. Every couple courses we do it. I throw some dirt in there, and tamp it down, and it's come along pretty good. <laughs> I 
the Epic Tiny House asks, is it possible to put up a sunscreen, like a tarp or something? Yeah, well, we were talking about that because, well, we have like a kind of a canopy type thing to put up. Uh, we wouldn't be able to use it on days like this. Oh, man. Because it would fly far, far away. Yeah. But yeah, shade, shade really helps the work. So we're talking about bringing out that uh, temporary shelter. Uh, but yeah, we just have to do it on, be careful what days we do it. Obviously today we'll just take off. Mm -hmm. My arms would fall off from all that <laughs> tamping. Uh, that is a tough job. That's probably one of the things you like least about this whole thing. Eh? Especially on that hot day. Uh, when you did the tamping, uh, it was tough making any progress on that, huh? Yeah. Do you make new tampers yet? That's a good question, Rebel. Yeah, I'm actually in the process of making a new tamper as we speak. It takes, it doesn't take long to, uh, I just decided one night, you know what? We need another tamper. These things broke. I want to put one together. So it didn't actually take me too long. I got another um yucca branch drilled some holes in it put some rebar had her twist some barbed wire on it got the ferro cement made mixed up put it together but unfortunately the crazy part of the process is you want a slow cure on it the slower the cure the stronger the ferro cement's going to be yeah. so i'm actually curing it as we speak you two changed my mind to do earth bags and not rammed earth wow. really and seeing all the seeing how it goes out there and be like oh yeah <laughs> that looks so easy <laughs> <laughs> we wait to see if it kills us or not <laughs> yeah wait to see <laughs> if we live then make your full decision uh honestly there are there are good good points and bad points you know there are positives and negatives to everything and you just got to decide what's better for you like for us i think you know just not investing in all the clamps and boards and stuff like that to do the plus the cost of you know all the footers and the roof and everything like that so I don't know. just pile up a bunch of dirt in a dome shape and live in that <laughs> <laughs> did we order the liner yet did you i didn't did you i didn't no we got time uh i'd say probably probably uh Look at getting the liner within the next week or two. Uh, I don't think we want to hear too soon because it's going to be a little while before we can even utilize that. Good evening, country homestead preacher. I have a question. Why did you post your Q&A in <laughs> Eastern Standard Time when you are? You hope you told <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I can't post on our time because our time doesn't shift with daylight savings time with it's... most of the country. So I pick Eastern Standard Time. I figure people can figure it <laughs> <laughs> I just pick Eastern Standard Time. I figure it's either should be maybe Eastern or Pacific or something like that. That's the time most people go by, right? I guess. Nobody cares about those in between. We're in a weird. Yeah. We're in our own zone, twilight zone. I can agree with that. <laughs> twilight zone. What was your favorite episode of the Twilight Zone? Leave that in the. <laughs> leave that in there. I want to know that. What's your favorite episode of the Twilight Zone? <laughs> Abel asked, "How are you going to put the cement on the earth bag?" So, Wait, what? How are we putting cement on the earth bags? So we are. We're not gonna. We're gonna have like an earthen plaster on the walls, the above ground wall parts of the earth bags, and then for the roof, we're doing ferro cement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so that's gonna be separate. 
but kind of tied into the walls. Separate, but together. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, we don't know. We're just figuring it out as we go along. We don't have any plans. <laughs> we don't. North Star Prep Stater, how's it going? What is your elevation there? We're at about 4,300 feet. Pretty high up. Kind of. How's it going as the walls get higher? Yeah, it's uh... Right now it's kind of cool because the level that the bags are at inside the pit like, we don't need the ladder to get in and out of yeah. the uh, cistern area. We can still get down to it's like two giant the steps. bottom, <laughs> but we can also get up to ground level easily, too. But it's going to, you know, change with each level we go up. It kind of changes how we work. It changes it pretty drastically. Yeah. And honestly, we got to plan ahead right now as to how we're going to keep going as we go up. Uh, you know, if we can figure out because it's going to be a challenge, especially once we start going higher above ground. You're going to have to practice your balancing act up there. Yeah. Are you nervous about that part? Uh, a little bit. She's nimble, though. Not really afraid of heights. Just be nimble, just be quick. <laughs> Heirloom permaculture, what's up? Sewing a legacy, how's it going? Haskins family vlog. I am here listening, making my supper. I'll take some. Whatever you're making, we'll take some of that. <laughs> Wait, except if it's squirrel. <laughs> you wouldn't eat squirrel. She said, would you? I'm not a picky eater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. If it's squirrel, just delete it. Open Gate Farmstead, how you doing? So, DG, we're, we just finished uh, row six in the paddocks, right? Yes. Row number numero seis for our Spanish speaking community here. I like that. I like that. I like that rhyme, Marilyn Permaculture. <laughs> that one's nice. Uh, number seven. We're going to try and hit number seven tomorrow. I've been out there sifting dirt all day, trying to get um, trying to get ready for tomorrow. I think I've done about 20 cartfuls of sifted soil today. And I'm hoping that we can get knockout number seven tomorrow. Lucky number seven. Farm all fanatic, what's up? <laughs> uh, I figured at row seven, we'll be a quarter of the way done with the cistern. That's crazy. Think of using a three in one hammer drill. I know you've talked about like wanting a hammer drill. There's so many tools, so little money. <laughs> it's on wish list, but we'll get it someday. It's hammer time. Uh, so another thing, one thing I want to do, wanna, I want to sprinkle in with this live. Sprinkle it in between the other questions we get. Keep on putting your questions if you got questions in there. We will, we're going to try and get to them. Just as keeping track of all the questions. Don't worry, you okay. won't get missed. Oh. And if you do get missed, blame her. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's uh, another 10 questions for homesteaders going around. Uh, living off grid McGarvey style. I don't know if you guys watch that channel, but he answered those questions. He was like, hey, uh, I like a couple channels. I want Green Dream Project to answer these questions. So we're going to answer 10 new questions for homesteaders. Mm -hmm. Houston Firefox. Houston Firefox, thank you so much for that. We took the doll out of here just for you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to see the doll back, just let us know if you miss it. I got my hat. Okay. 
we're gonna answer some questions. City Stead, what's up? After I say hi to the City Stead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's knock out question number one. What is it? Do, do you, you homestead full time or do you have a job? Uh, well, I don't have a job. We're deadbeat. We're deadbeat hippies. hippies. I can agree with that. Uh, no job. We're just, I guess, or I guess we're full time homesteaders. Yeah. But we're not, uh, we're not self sufficient yet. We're not there. But we're working on it. We're trying our best to get there. And we're trying our best. But, you know, uh, quarantine, right? COVID 19, we can't even get jobs if we wanted them. What about work? Social from distancing. Home? Oh, okay. <laughs> Wear the hat. Got a request. No. Does that even fit? Well, my hair is up, so <laughs> I have too much hair. Uh, la, 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 la. Food Foresters asks, what's the diameter of the cistern? Really great question, uh, Food Foresters. The outside diameter is, and what we had planned on was like a 20 foot cistern. And it's like a 20 foot diameter from outside to outside, but those bags are so thick. Yeah. The inside foot diameter. And a half. Foot and a half. So the inside diameter is really going to be like about 17 feet. Really cuts down on the amount of storage, but I think it'll make a sturdier tank. Make it strong. Yeah. Uh, James asked uh, any vertical rebar getting hammered in the bags? great question james yeah so i'm not we're not putting any rebar i figure anything below the ground is already gonna uh, have plenty of uh stability right there but when we go above yeah i want to do a combination of the barbed wire and rebar pat pound that in and then that'll also be uh attached to the roof we're gonna attach that That'll be mm -hmm. part of the roof. Oh, and uh, DGS, what do you have planned for a roof on the cistern? And will it be part of the water harvesting program? Yeah, so we're tying everything in together, or at least we're trying to. So, man, we got, we're actually, some ideas are up in the air, but we're going to do a ferro cement roof over the tank. And the roof on the tank will have the gutters. We want. So not only will we collect rainwater off of our current roof that we have built there, we're going to change all the piping and pipe this now into our new main tank. We're also going to collect water off of the roof of the cistern. And then we'll use our existing tanks as sort of overflow from this tank. Wow. That's crazy, huh? El Floyd's Journeys, what's up? Yeah, so much water. I was thinking, so it's not as much water as I was thinking that this tank would hold. Um, when I did original calculations, I was doing it as a, with an inside diameter of 20 feet. And we would have been able to hold approximately like 25,000 gallons of water. But since of the, with the thickness of the walls and how everything's turning out, it's probably going to be a, clo a little closer to 19,000. But that's nothing to sneeze at. No, that's not bad. Don't sneeze, you're going to freak everyone out. I don't have to sneeze. COVID-19. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're not demonetized because <laughs> I said that. <laughs> well, let's hit the next question. Uh, Houston Firefox oh. asks, do you have a Berkey filter or something else to purify water? We do have a Berkey filter. So far, that's our only filtration system. For, you know, well, we got like a, you know, besides the screen for water going into these cisterns. Uh, that's the only really filter we have is the, the Berkey. But and it works great. It's been working fantastic. We still haven't died yet. <laughs> or have we? <laughs> Road to Homestead in. What's up? Yeah, heirloom permaculture said it was 96 over there today. Wow. That is crazy. The, the, so far, the hottest it's been over here was like, what was yesterday's temperature? It was 85? Yeah, 85. It felt like... It felt 90. like it. I'll tell you, the sun is intense. 
and the UV out here is no joke. Yeah, I think with uh, the higher elevation, that UV light is just like... Uh, thank you, uh, Road to Homestead, and we hope you guys are doing well as well. Living off-grid McGarvey style. We've already answered one of those questions. <laughs> let's answer another McGarvey question. Okay. Since since Ron's here, let's get on to the next question. What is the first animal you added to your homestead? Oh, that one's easy. Okay, well, before we even moved out here, we had chickens in our backyard in the city. So I don't know if that counts, but... That does count. Okay. That totally counts. And since we moved out here, maybe crew. And we still have chickens. We still have chickens. We have more chickens. G princess, mom is in the house. She says stay healthy. We're trying. We're we trying. trying. Let's do another one. How do you eat your eggs? How do you eat your eggs? I don't eat many eggs, actually. Uh, they give me indigestion. But I do, I will eat them like in a meal or in baked goods or whatever. I make omelets. In fact, I've been known to make a pretty good omelet. Yes. I didn't realize I had such talent for it, but then I started making omelets for uh, people, and they're like, oh my God, it was very good. best omelet I've ever had. So I guess I'm something of an omeleteer. <laughs> That's a thing, right? Uh, it is now. <laughs> I'm just going to put this on. I'm just going to put this out here. We're going to try and be on for as long as we can. Or until my phone runs out of power and then everything shuts down. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we're out of we're out of time on it. Midlife prices, what's up? Just on for a minute to say hi. How's it going, y'all? Houston Firefox, thank you for the super chat. And tarantulas, snakes, and scorpions. Even more pet fun. It's true. They just got them all. Come through though. <laughs> <laughs> Haskins Family Vlog says they can't eat them. Yeah. Uh, Junior P is, do you put cement in your bags and is it a good idea to or not? Good question. We have not been putting a cement stabilizer or a lime stabilizer in our bags. We're going straight soil to bag. We feel like uh, the amount of clay to sand ratio in our soil out here uh, is adequate for building yeah so like I would definitely recommend doing your soil test uh, and even playing around with the soil and finding out how well that works um, a lot of people use stabilizers in there and it could be a good idea for you I always recommend um, kind of making that decision on your own based on the soil and everything like that Open Gate Farm said, said, your chickens are beautiful. Thank you. Thanks. I think they are too. Midlife Prices said, uh, they're still there. It's, it's a great windy. <laughs> yes. The winds are just ruckus today. Sand blasted in my face. Which one is worse? Homesteading in Arizona? A homestead in Alaska? I'll tell you that much. Uh... Just in my personal opinion, Alaska would be much harder. <laughs> I'm not going to lie and say like, oh, it's, I mean, conditions in Arizona can be rough, but I would prefer the the heat and the sun. Yeah, I think we deal better with the heat than with cold, yeah. per, just personally. Should we do another question? Yes. How big is your current homestead? Uh, we currently reside on 40 acres out here. 40 acres. 
Hopefully we'll... I don't know if we'll plan to use all of it, but uh, a decent amount. Will crew be getting a stimulus check too? I wish. Yeah, I think so, right? Like adults, children, and, and large... And Akitas. Akitas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, plans for rocks, um, Open Gate Farm said. So we'll probably use some in the house build. Um, kind of decorative and functional elements of the house. And some of the larger rocks, I'd like to try making like um, a fence or a, a wall, I guess a stone wall. And uh, well, like plenty of gravel. You could use gravel for putting in bags and stuff like that. Man, a lot of possibilities. What are some homesteading skills you want to learn in the coming year? Is, uh, How to build a house. House building. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, there's so many skills involved with that. I think this is going to be a big learning year for, for us with the, I mean, the electrical, the plumbing, the construction. Yeah, of the house. building with the earth. Yeah, all that. A little bit of carpentry. Big learning. Year. We're we're uh, we're not too far. We're a little north of Douglas, about uh, about a half hour away from Douglas. And uh, yeah, I think the gabions will always have a place here. I think we'll always be utilizing those. I think that's a. Oh yeah. Those are amazing to have out mm -hmm. here. Heirloom permaculture said, "Try homesteading in Oklahoma. You get Arizona and Alaska in the same week, or even <laughs> a day." No, thank you. <laughs> and then you gotta dodge the tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> James Carrot says, any restrictions on cutting off a lot or two? I don't think there are restrictions on that. We could cut off lots, although we don't have plans on that. But I think if you buy anything over I think anything over four, you could cut things down to four acre sizes, right? Four acres, yeah. Um, so if you buy, you know, like a 40 acre parcel, you can cut that down. Has True played around or got bitten by any critters he shouldn't have been playing with? No, not yet. Wait. Where's that? was that? Houston Firefox. But it's it's hard to keep him away from like holes well, and stuff. He wants to sniff around and. Well, you know, actually he has. He has. Yeah. Before, when we had when we had other people living with us, he uh, he went and charged at another dog that we had oh, living yeah. out here at the time, and that dog ran. But then he was like, he turned around, but then he was sneaking. He jumped back at crew and got him and in they, the, just above the eye. They tussled for a few seconds. Yeah. Got him in the eye. But, uh, man, uh, I think luckily for the other dog, crew was on the end of the leash. Otherwise that could have ended very yeah. badly, but he did get the best of crew in that, in that exchange. And he's only, I think he's got like a, just a little scar mm -hmm. above the eye. Have you researched what fruit trees would thrive there or not yet? Um, yeah, a few things. So, like Myers lemon, I think would do well here. Um, some apple trees like Gala. Um, I think things like 
like figs um, and dates. I was wondering, because in the Phoenix area, there's a lot of date palms, but I think that would be tricky to do here. It's a very tricky, uh, kind of a trickier climate because we're... It does get a little bit colder in winter, yeah. but then we still get the we heat get the in heat. the summer. Are you for land? You know, if they took away the option to opt out. Not yet. Not yet. It's still there. It still hasn't been discussed and um, taken it away yet. So mm -hmm. it's still an option. Looks like Sierra Vista might be getting some rain this evening. You know, there's, there's a chance. It could rain here as well. We'll see. I'll take it. Uh, questions on the sheet oh where are we at oh <laughs> uh, number six what are your thoughts on fake meat is that like like vegan meat like tofurkey or is it like the laboratory meat i'm still not sure about that question either way i'm Nah. I don't like anything fake. Nothing fake. <laughs> Only real stuff here. We're real. Keep it real. Keep it real. Uh, I mean, our our goals are to produce all of our food um, here. So if you know, if we did have meat, it would be from real animals. Just say no to fake meat, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Haskins Family Vlog asks, what all do you use the water you collect for? Right now, it's uh, mainly just for like living, drinking, cooking. Uh, but now we're using bathing. it for building. Bathing. Cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we are using some for um, now building. Now we're using it for building. So we have to wet the soil before we put it in the bags. And a little bit for the garden. Mm -hmm. Still getting some stuff from the garden. Abel said, I want to do a homesteading uh, using a cargo trailer as a solar panel holder. And putting a pump house in it. So well, that's interesting. Food foresters, have a good night. Thank you for being here. So Midlife Prices had, they have a, a trailer mm -hmm. that holds their solar, right? Yep. Uh... Little Beans, Gar Little Beans Garden asks, uh, no more visits from the neighbor's cows. We actually did oh. have a couple cows sneak in. I think we're going to put in a video at some point. Yeah. I don't know where we're going to sneak that in, but um, I had to chase them out with a drone. <laughs> that was interesting. It worked. Yeah, it worked really well. And then we sealed it all up. Yep. Now we're fully secure. 100% cow proof. But if you have any holes in a fence or something, those cows will sneak in. They'll sneak in. The Open Gate Farm says, says, it's so hot where you are. Ever thought maybe we should swim in the cistern? You know, we'll have a man, well, we'll have a hatch at the uh, top of the cistern. So maybe we'll take some cistern dips in there. Would you, would you do swim in that water? I don't know. Eventually we're going to have to drink that water, right? It'll be filtered. <laughs> Just don't pee in there. Okay. <laughs> and if you did, we got the Berkey. <laughs> oh, sorry. Are we disturbing you? Are we disturbing you, crew? <laughs> ah. You don't even know what that is. <laughs> Uh, 
Ready for question seven? No, but let's do it anyway. What does your dream homestead look like? Do you want to say something or should I? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, for me, I was thinking about that question. And for me, our dream, my, my vision of a dream homestead is where all of our systems, everything we build, everything we have out here works together and functions. All these systems function together as one whole unit, supporting each other and helping each other along the way and, and giving back to the land what we take out of it. Yeah. Closed loop system. That's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Houston Firefox asks, are you har harvesting the AC condenser runoff from the RV? It's probably good for any trees. So we haven't had to run that AC yet this year. Um, but yeah, we have done that. We just have like a bucket where the water runs off the RV roof mm -hmm. and we collect it. Every little bit helps. Yeah, every little drop of water. Whoa. Drone wrangling cow work. Drone wrangling works well. It does, man. That, that cows did not like that drone at all, <laughs> let me tell you. Jane sees Oregon Homestead. What's up? They lost the internet for a bit there, but I'm back. I'm glad to see you back. A cow came on your property dinner. That's all I can say. <laughs> I know, but we'd get in so much trouble if we did. Pharmacy sees network. Carlton, what's up? Can't stay too busy, but wanted to say hi and be supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Carlton. We know it's a busy time for everyone. We're building a house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're building a sister, and then we're building a house. Uh, Mark McCumber, we are at 4,300 feet elevation. You high? It's high, isn't it? <laughs> Living off grid, McGarvey style, do a sunken greenhouse with earth bags. Yeah, I think interesting like that to you do say it. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that is on the plans. I'm gonna build some wall peenies, uh, get the uh, wall it up with uh, earth bags. That's mm -hmm. in the books. Houston Firefox, thank you again for the super chat. What kind of drone I use in a, we have a um, Phantom 4 Pro. It's all right. It's all right. I kind of like that um, that Mavic where it folds up and everything like that. But the Phantom 4 does pretty good. It has some pretty good imagery. Can't complain. Oh, DG asked if. Um... I post our Facebook page for Cochise County Alternative Building. Sure. Yeah, why not? Go for it. Well, thank you, Ron. Uh, thanks for being here. Have a good night. We appreciate you stepping in, and we're going to get to the rest of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Should we go to the next one? Let's do another one because we're running out of juice. Too. <laughs> what is your least favorite thing to do on the homestead? Oh, sifting dirt. Sifting dirt. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, man, what uh, what's your least favorite thing to do? Tamping dirt. <laughs> sifting dirt, tamping dirt. Okay. How about you sift and I'll tamp? Okay, that works out. Uh, we both got to do that. <laughs> Scrap Shack Farms 134. Good evening. How's it going? We have a DJI Mavic Harris one. Yeah, I can imagine. Ah. I should maybe should have gone with the Mavic, but uh it's so cool. It's like so portable. You <laughs> fold it up. And then when you got it out, it's like a, it's like one of the video game controller. <laughs> and 
Not that I know anything about video games. <laughs> Is it a plus to be on all that acreage in this mess of the virus, or is there a downside to it for you? If there is a downside, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, man, that's one of the cool things. Uh, like, you know, this, I mean, the virus isn't cool. But, like, with this pandemic, it's just, like, it hasn't been that big of a change for us. It's like, okay, just Well, yeah, we're left. already pretty socially isolated yeah. out here, so we haven't changed too much, and we really only go out to if we need supplies groceries or so it's like a little getaway a little isolated getaway and there's plenty to do it's not like we're bored here yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and built on the rock homestead they asked uh how long has it been since you went anywhere uh Like what, just, just out of here? Yeah. Well, it was at least Sunday that we went out, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost been a week. Next? Sure. <laughs> One piece of advice to give yourself. Hmm, interesting. Like, like if we were about to go off grid, we were about to start homesteading. I don't know. That's all I got. Like, to give my past self? Hmm. What piece of advice would you give to yourself? <sighs> okay, uh, well, I think some advice that I kind of continually give myself um is trying to live up to my name and so my mom sent me a text recently just kind of randomly saying oh i love you very much and she reminded me what my name means so jessica means gift or grace of God. And I another way I think about that is like unconditional love. So that's been a lesson that I've been trying to learn. Like how do you love unconditionally, say someone that you don't know or someone you might think doesn't deserve that. Um, so how do I do that and how do I best show that compassion for people or even animals or just the earth? Um, and then my middle name, which I'm sure most people don't know, is Joy, J-O-Y. And that's another big lesson that I've had to learn. You know, having uh, kind of struggled with depression and anxiety in the past, um, I learned that joy is, is not like a fleeting emotion. It's something that you have to choose and you choose daily. And for me, the key to that was gratitude, like appreciating everything that I have, even the small things, even things that seem bad and, you know, finding joy in it. <laughs> Well, I'm not saying anything after that. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Uh, did you just think of that? That's something I've, I've been thinking of. I think of a lot. So Nice. That's a good answer. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What else? What else? Yvonne from Sacramento. How's it going? Glad you could be here. Okay, 
Uh, Houston Firefox said, have you thought about a large trough dug into the ground to catch the overflow and just let it seep in to irrigate your land? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll be doing that. Uh, things like that for sure. Yeah. Um, Earthworks. Yep. Great way to harvest water. And definitely I want to do that by the road too because there's a lot of road runoff so and with the dirt runoff. roads it um, it can create like erosion and uneven roads and flooding. Um, so we want to direct that where it needs to go not, you know, on mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. Crew sighting. Getting comfy on his bed. <laughs> Play crew break. Play that one. Another super chat from Houston Firefox. Thank you so much, Houston Firefox. <laughs> He's dark underbelly of a slimy creature under a rock in a faraway place. <laughs> crew, is, crew is very camera shy. You cannot, it's tough to get like a straight on shot of this guy's face. He always likes to like to. <laughs> Get on to another question. All right, number 10. I think we're going to have to wrap this up soon. Oh. One animal you'd never raise and why? I would never raise a... A beluga mongoose. whale. Mongoose? <laughs> a beluga a whale? You should raise mongoose. Oh, yeah. You know what? That would be they good. They eat snakes. Yeah. Ugh, dang it. <laughs> I said it, but then it was, a, it was a bad answer. See, that's why I don't want to give answers. <laughs> I should, would we, should never, have, we should have all the mongoose. I would never raise an animal that is inappropriate for our situation and climate. Like a penguin? Penguin. Or... A polar bear. Giant squid. Mm. How cool would it be though to have a giant squid? We might may have enough water. Monday we'll have a giant squid out here. Oh, okay. That'd be cool for a video anyway. We got a giant squid. <laughs> <laughs> Homesteady just got camels. Whoa. That would be sweet. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a camel. Amy, what's up? She made it. Sunny's place. How's it going? Yeah, I think there's one more question. If money was no object, what's one thing you would add to the homestead? If money was no object, what is one thing I would add? Hmm. You got anything to that? Uh, maybe like a earth moving machine, like a backhoe or uh, something. That is good. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, like a backhoe would be would be nice here. Haskins Family Vlog, gotta go, guys. I'm super happy. I was fine. Well, thank you, Haskins Family Vlog. Are you guys going live tonight, or are you not going live? Either way, have a good night. Yeah, earth moving equipment would be nice. Not only would be able to get things done faster here, but uh, earthworks would be uh, a lot easier to install here. That would help us out a lot. Coral snake. Ooh. That's scary. Um, we're running low on power here. Yes, GDP we are. Okay. Uh, excellent. 
we're about to cut out soon here. We got another question here from Little Beans Garden. Jessica, how is the art? You still doing it or just focusing on one task at a time? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> the building has been taking up most of the time lately, um, but I do try to do things when I can. Yeah. Uh, but mostly the, the building is just going to take up all of our time. Yeah. And you sneak out like when you can just to try and get some of the... Uh, the chores just, and just stuff. Chores it's and hard stuff like to that. even do that. And uh, Kiri asks, how long does it take you to do one layer of bags? Then, yeah, that's, that's actually not too bad. I think it depends on how we're feeling and how the weather is. And If the weather's and... decent and it's not too bad, filling the bags, tamping them, doing the barbed wire could probably take about... Um, about maybe eight hours for the whole process. You think it takes that long? About well, six to eight hours, maybe. I think the fastest we did it was maybe like half a day. Got done in the early afternoon. So how many hours is that? I don't know. Anyway, we're we're getting low on energy here. Uh, we're gonna cut it out now. But uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We apologize for missing last week. Uh, hopefully there won't be too many interruptions like that again. Well, it's but good to see everyone. Good to see you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us for this uh, for this time. We always appreciate it. Uh, definitely check out our moderators. They do a, such an amazing job. Haskins Family Vlog is going live right after us. Go check them out. You'll love them. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for being here. Good night. Good night.